Today, we are going to be introducing a new way of measuring angles. We're going to introduce a new way of measuring angles. Now, if you're like me when I was in year 11, the whole question in my head was why? Why introduce a way of measuring angles? We have a fine way of measuring angles. If I said a whole revolution, how many, what unit do you use to measure that and how many do you have? You'd say degrees and you'd say a whole revolution is 360 degrees. You're like, it's fine. I've been using this for years. What's the big deal, right? Well, the thesis that I want to put to you this lesson to justify why we're doing this is the way you measure matters. That's it. That's all I want to say. The way that you measure something, the units that you use, they matter. Let me try and illustrate this. Uh, we have the metric system for measuring lengths, weights, uh, areas, things like that. Right? We have the metric system. But who knows what came before the metric system? Does anyone know? Imperial. The imperial system, right? Now, we, especially in like... <laughs> um, in the most of the world that uses the metric system, we somewhat laugh at the imperial system because it basically looks like this, right? You look at, thought this is just rubbish on the right-hand side of the board. It's actually because I can't remember all this stuff. Um, I could start at a bunch of different places, but for length, I'm going to start with inches because I think we know what an inch is. It's about two and a half centimeters, right? And then maybe you can help me work out what the rest of this is. What's next after an inch? A foot. A foot, right? A foot is... 12 inches. Does anyone know what's after a foot? Yeah. A yard is three feet. So that's roughly, it's a bit less than a meter, I think. Mm. Don't quote me on that. Um, does anyone know? I'd be very surprised if anyone knows what happens after a foot. Does anyone know? It starts with a C. Yeah, I, I didn't know either. I had to look it up. Uh, <laughs> after a foot, it's a chain. A chain is 22, sorry, after a yard. A chain is 22 yards. Um, you might know this one. It's very old-fashioned, but you've probably heard this word before. After a chain, foot. it's not back to foot. We, we used foot before. I was just trying to not tell you. This is called a furlong. A furlong? Have you heard? Have you even heard that word before? I've heard it, but never, I knew, didn't know what it was. A furlong is 10 chains. You should know what this one is. A mile. a mile, thank you, is eight furlongs. And then this one is one that I only thought about as I only associated with the sea. That's a bit of a clue. <laughs> a long distance is after miles three miles gives you one league so there was a book called 10,000 leagues under the sea um, now you look at this and you kind of like thank, thank goodness we don't have to do this anymore okay the imperial system the imperial system is well can someone tell me right now what's the big glaring disadvantage of the imperial system. Say it again? Irregular. It's irregular, right? Um, and as a consequence of its irregularity, it is insanely hard to remember. Um, that's why I, well, admittedly, I didn't grow up in the imperial system. So perhaps if we had grown up in that, we might have known it. But it is weird. And it just keeps on going. Like, smaller than inches, it's even more irregular. Bigger than leagues, it keeps on being irregular. So instead, we designed the metric system, right? In the metric system, the whole advantage is that it is not irregular, it's, it's consistent, it's regular. It, all the way up, it's like, oh, to get from one unit to the next, you're going to multiply by, by 10 or 100 or 1,000. It's always in powers of 10 rather than these random units, right? But what you need to understand is that it's not like one system is completely superior in every way. Every system is a compromise. For example, when you've got metric units, right? Some of your numbers end up really enormous. If you measure something in, like, say, kilometers, right? Um, if you're measuring an astronomical distance, or if you're measuring a microscopic distance, the numbers are either huge or they're teeny, 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 tiny. So, for example, we had to introduce things like uh, scientific notation to be able to deal with the enormity or the tininess of our numbers. Okay. Now. Here's the thing, right? And you guys haven't, not like me, haven't experienced this personally, but you can see it even here on the board, right? The great strength of the imperial system is no matter what distance you're talking about or no matter what weight or things like that, right? Pretty much everything you can deal with, this is going to be a terrible illustration, but you'll remember it. Um, everything you're going to deal with, any length, any weight, you can deal with on an order of magnitude. You can say, how long's that? Oh, it's about seven of these. You just pick the appropriate unit. Right? Or it's about three of these. And you never have to deal with crazy, insane, huge numbers or really, really tiny numbers. If you're like, well, it's a small thing, I'll just use a small unit. Right? And so you can always think of things in terms of numbers that are easy to calculate mentally. Why do you think that might have been important in an age when the imperial system was around? Why do you think mental calculation might be why we would build our system? Because technology was terrible. 
We didn't have any good technology, right? Um, people used to have calculators and they'd have to like, their gears and cogs, you have to like physically crank it by hand. It's like, this sucks, why would we do this? Why not just design a system? You could just work it all out in your head, right? So, here's my point. Every measurement system has a trade-off, right? I think by and large, we're like, we don't need this advantage anymore. We have c computers in our pockets, right? So that's why we've, as a, as a world, almost moved over. Okay, now that's why we've been thinking about degrees, right? Degrees, we're going to introduce this new, I want to use the word unit, though in a few lessons time, hopefully I'll explain why it's actually not quite a unit. A new way of measuring angles and it's called a radian. R-A-D-I-A-N-S. You know on your calculator, in fact, could you get your calculator out for me? On your calculator, if you go to, I'm going to borrow yours if that's okay. Thank you very much. If you go, I think you have to say shift. Yeah, you do. Um, if you say shift and then mode, right, which takes you to the setup, you'll notice, I think it's the, yeah, which row is it? It's like the third or the fourth row? It's the, it's the second row, actually, yeah. You can see three and four. Do you see options three and four? They are deg for degrees and rad for radians, right? Now, sometimes you might have gone to that and you're like, what is, what is this about? What does all this mean? Uh, we don't know what three quarters of it does. But those two things are for switching between degrees or radians. If you want, you can make that heading, by the way. Radians. Okay. Now, radians are going to feel weird. They're going to feel weird the same way when I just described the imperial system. That feels weird to us, right? Um, in the same way that the metric system felt weird to people when people, when societies changed over from one to the other. But I promise you that weirdness is going to be worth it because there are some huge advantages to moving to a new kind of system. <coughs> it's just not clear yet what the advantages are. Let's understand the system first and then we'll get to them.